here is the thing about collar grabbing. And we've all had to, whether it's latching the leash, whether it's thinking it's too loose and you're going to go fix it. And the moment you touch the collar, the dog gets all rangy. Oh, she. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that one you shouldn't be grabbing his collar. He's scorned you because Andy made the mistake of grabbing his collar. And we've got an experienced volunteer here. Not, I'm not going to say uh, we're talking about the best handler on the planet, but we've got a decent volunteer, been through through it numerous times, and yet, what a mistake. Grabbing a collar is the most aggressive act these days because too many people have unintentionally trained their dogs to only know that that's when you have control. And I, I, I'm telling you, I've turned it into one of our tests. It's part of the test now because it's such a common problem. People take the lazy approach. Come here, come here. I said, come here. I said, come here. <laughs> now, on that, let me explain to you about collar grabbing. I had a beautiful golden retriever. I worked for the rescue organization. We knew it bit. We knew it had something to do with its collar. Dog's at my place three weeks. I'm trying to make this dog bite me. Or at least find out what the exact trigger is. I grab his collar fast. I grab it slow and creepy. I grab it hard. I grab it slow. I mean, literally, I was attempting everything. This bugger wouldn't bite me. Finally, one day, close to him leaving, I've got all the dogs outside. And all of a sudden, okay, guys, let's go. Let's go. Come on. Everybody, let's go. Got a habit. Click my lead. Everybody's coming. He's standing at the door. <laughs> I'm like, come on, buddy, come on. And I reach. Come on, let's go, let's go inside. Boom, there he is. Right there. Didn't release either. In my arm, golden retriever. I know the teeth are through. Can't really feel it right at first. You've all had scratches in that, but a full-blown puncture and staying on your arm doesn't hurt initially. Hmm. What do I do about this? Hmm. Fortunately, I do know what to do. <laughs> Fortunately, this, right? He's still on my arm. He is still on my arm. Now, how am I going to get him to remove? <laughs> no! Anybody? Gag him. Push in. Pops his mouth open. When I was little, I'd stick my fist in their mouth when they're chewing on your hand so that they call. Yeah, gag him. Gag him. Fights back. Not hurting him. Now, a very different arm bite was a very large bull mastiff who is extremely unsocial and dangerous. This dog was on a leash. His owner was holding it. He was behind the patio doors. And she was entering in as I was sitting in the house. Hey! Dog's coming into my space. Whoa! Me doing tons of protection bite work over the years went into this no I went into this motion hey don't you know who I am <laughs> yeah boom bit my hand oh huh. gagged him what do you think you bit me again oh gagged him what do you think you're doing whoa came at me again third bite right here now if that's a golden retriever this is a bull mastiff and that's a very dangerous area to be getting a bite. Because then I saw Magnum artery sticking out of this massive hole, pumping in the air. <laughs> wow! Wow! As <laughs> you start to see stars. Gagging works, but you then have to have a plan. <laughs> they don't always just back off and stop biting. They sometimes go for the second, third, and fourth bite if they had the opportunity. 
Unfortunately, he was on leash, by the way. Owner's still holding him. Remember that part? Yeah. Bit me three times. While I was right there, I had to physically, I kept that one in, because obviously I now know he's going to bite again. So I have to feed him my arm. So I keep him in as I take him back to the patio door. And then she can remove him at that moment. So sometimes, as crazy as it sounds, you might have to keep that body part in the mouth to at least get to safety. If you gag and they back off, most of them back off. This is a, a unique case, but most of them will back off. If they don't, they were coming in for the second one. All right, you might need to give up that body part for a moment while you find a way to safety. Okay, that's a, that's a pretty serious big case. Arrested here. Normal people would be panicking and try to pull their arm out. And they yeah. pull and they rip. And not only do they rip, uh, but the dog then is also kind of put into a higher state, right? Because it's just extreme panic on everybody. Remember, they mirror our emotions. Okay. Now, if you remember, <laughs> and you're not too freaked out at that moment. That's an option. But now let's talk about a different type of biter. How about the type that likes to bite numerous body parts in one shot? Wham, 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 wham. Right? This is not a dog you can typically even control because he's just literally biting body parts. This is a full-blown yeah. attack. Yeah. This is an attack. And all you've got to do is find your way to safety, however that is. Locking yourself in a cage, uh, using the hose if had to. We're talking the severe cases. We're not talking about a little dog who's having a little nervous reaction to your reach. We're talking about a full-blown man stopper attacking you. Okay, and it's a possibility around here. So a dog who bites more than one body part in, in the first lash at you, is a risk and he is attacking he's not biting you and that's where you've got to go into protect yourself mode in any way shape or form which of course means all of these other things but if you're not aware of your surroundings if you're not aware of already the obstacles that are around you and the dangers that are around you anytime you go you're going to be handling a dog you should be aware of those okay